My goodness, you know, it's just going to be one of those days. You know, you think you're just rolling into the weekend. It's going to be all sweet and good to go and everything's going to be awesome. And then it's not. And uh, so anyway, got a lot of stuff going on. Um, give me a second and I will touch on that. Um, let me just check audios here real quick. All right. So, uh, I started off with a good morning. <laughs> I was all kind of really, you know, going well, had some stuff going on, had things to do, but I was like, you know, I got this under control. And then, and then I walked by my front door and noticed that I had an Amazon delivery this morning, and uh, which was uh, some Christmassy present stuff you know, and I was very excited and pulled it up and was like, oh, cool. And I looked and saw, you know, opened the packages and made sure, you know, it was there and everything was cool. And I was like, oh, this is great. And then I looked on my account to see what, you know, because I've had a few things to be ordered and they're not all showing up at the same time. So I just looked at my account to see what was supposed to be delivered. And unfortunately, an item that was supposedly in that delivery was not there. Um, and it was a larger item too. It was a, it should have been a box, like about like this big, a bigger box. And all I got was a couple of envelopes, you know, and there's the picture. They take the picture and put it on your front. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But my order wasn't there. So, uh, you know, the problem is that Amazon makes it really, really, really hard to actually talk to anybody really freaking hard. And so I spent half my morning just trying to get a customer service. It's like their website wouldn't work. I mean, just all kinds of crap. And so it was very frustrating this morning. It kind of got me off of my, uh, it got me off of my routine of where I should have been. And I just dropped it down the floor, freaking great, whatever. So anyway, I've been chasing my tail half the morning when I should have been getting stuff ready to be out here. That didn't happen. Um, so if you were waiting for me at 11 o'clock, I apologize for that. It wasn't intentional. Trust me, I would have rather been doing this stuff than dancing around the Amazon craziness that I encountered this morning, just trying to find somebody that I could actually talk to. Yeah, so anyhow. That is kind of how I spent my morning, just kind of in a... And then the best part is, oh, it looks like there should have been a delivery update, but we can't do anything until after the 20th. Okay, that, that doesn't help me. Yeah, so we can't do anything until after the 20th, so contact us back then if, you haven't ha if it hadn't been delivered. I'm like, so i got to wait the entire weekend for something I know isn't going to show up for them to say, oh, well... Yeah, we'll just send you another one. And by the way, this one probably won't get there by Christmas. But we're sorry. I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, I know it's busy time of year and stuff, but this is why I did it a little early so that I would have time. I didn't even ask for, like, express delivery. It was just regular delivery. So, anyhow. Um, that being said, something I did get, something that did come in, actually, this came in a couple days ago, so not... Not delivery 
to this morning and part of the debacle, but something that came in um, yesterday, maybe yesterday. Um, these are replacement blades for my, um, my jointer. So it's a pack of three, although I think I only have two blades on the jointer. I don't think it's three. But anyway, it came in a pack of three when I order replacements. And so at some point in time, I will be replacing the blades on my jointer because I do have nicked blades on there and I will not get a smooth, nice surface until that is done. Uh, let's see, uh, in recapping what we did last week, or last Wednesday, last week, it was this week. Um, but anyway, recapping what we did Wednesday, uh, basically I used the template, which I'm just set the computer on top of, Hang on a second. So I use my, my butterfly template here, or bow ties, or Dutchman, whichever you prefer. There's, there's many different ways to, to basically call these things, but this is a, a, an acrylic plexi template with many different sized uh, bow tie things that you can use here. I have a pattern template bit on my, uh, on my router, so you can see that this little collar right here is made for, ooh, it's grungy. I'm gonna have to clean that off before I send that around the inside. But anyway, that, that and the little eighth inch blade that are in there uh, help me to actually uh, create the, the cutouts. So I was working with my, uh, let's see if I got this one here. There we go. So you can see in the table here, I cut three of these out using the template. And what I'm doing now is moving to part two, which is cutting out the actual bow ties. If you're hand cutting bow ties, this is the reverse of how you would do it. If you're hand cutting, what you would do is first you would cut out your bow tie. Then you would take the bow tie, you would put that on your piece of wood, you would get your marking knife and you would trace around the outside of that bow tie and make little, you know, scratch marks all the way around so that you can mark the edge of your bow tie. Then you'd remove the bow tie, you would get your router and route out, not up to those lines, but you'd route out a lot of material close to those lines. Then you would get a chisel and you would chisel directly to those lines. And after all of that, your bow tie should fit into that opening that you made. So that is hand cutting. When you do it with a, with a template, you, do it, you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, I choose to use my template to cut out the opening first. Then I take the template, put it on a piece of wood cut out the bow tie, you use the same template for the, same, for the bow tie. The difference being that when you get ready to, when you get ready to actually use the, uh, there's some crap on here I need to clean off. When you get ready to use the, uh, the router to cut out the bow tie, which is how you do it. Also, when you hand cut the, the, the bow ties, um, I generally use the, um, ah! Creepy big spider. What are you doing in here? No spiders. I didn't kill him. He just ran away. Um, basically, you use a, uh, a bandsaw or something to cut your bow ties with so they can be nice and straight and uniform. And then you clean them up with a, um, you can clean them up with a chisel. I got some crap on this thing and it's, I do not want crap on my little collar here. That's not good. Where did I get on here? It's kind of some crusty stuff on there, which is not good. This should be nice and smooth. But I think what happened was um, I routed down a little deep <laughs> when I was doing these. So if you look here, you'll notice that there is a little mark right here that looks kind of like a bow tie on this thing. I routed just a hair deep when I was cutting this one out. And I think some of that stuff melted and got on the collar here, which is not good. This collar needs to be smooth. So I'm going to take a little this, this is like 220. I'm just cleaning off that little collar just to make sure that there's none of that burn stuff around there because I need this to run smoothly inside of my template to give me a 
very nice finish on here. Um, I'm just making sure there's nothing, nothing on here that's going to interfere with it running smoothly in that template. Because basically that collar needs to smoothly move around the inside of this template, Doop, like this. It'll move, you know, I have it on the wood, but it goes and traces around the inside. And this one's really important when you're doing the actual bow tie cutouts, you can't, you're not clearing material away. So you have to basically follow this outside template line, like to the T, because if you, if you wander inside, well, you've ruined your bow tie. So you have to follow this to the T. And um, I'm going to clean out. I've got some crap in the corners here. I just want to make sure that this thing is cleaned out and I don't have any dirt or crud or anything that is impeding. It just needs to be that acrylic and nothing else. So I'm just cleaning some of the little dirt and dust that accumulated in the corner here without, like I said, I don't want to change the profile because I've already cut these things. Let me, uh, let me just fold this paper over here and then fold it again. Anyway, I'm still a little not happy about my package this morning. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm a little off my game, but uh, let me just kind of clean off. It's kind of like some residue in here and I don't want any residue on here. I just want this nice and clean. So I'm not rubbing it with any force to change the the size, I'm just cleaning off the dirt that got kind of accumulates in these corners when you're using this thing. And uh, I don't want that. Now, I cut this one bow tie out. This is out of walnut. And I'll bring my piece over here. So uh, the other day I was like, oh, well, I've got this big piece of walnut that I can use. It was a thick piece of walnut. So it was like this thick and which is a pretty thick piece of wood. So what I did was I took that over to my bandsaw and did a resaw on it to make a thinner piece of wood. The thin piece of wood is still thicker than the pocket that I routed out for it to fit into. So it's a little deeper than that. So it'll sit above the edge so I can sand it flush. And you can see that I did that one right here, cut it out. Um, I just cut it out almost all the way through and then cut it out in the bandsaw and then finished it off with a chisel over here just to make it nice and clean. I have space for two more of these on here. This is very straight quarter sawn grain right here. And that will work really well uh, for these bow ties. This is the underside of the table that I'm working with right now. And the uh, I want to make sure that I have some crud in there. Whoosh. Um, I, I need to make sure that I'm not, uh, yeah, what the heck? There we go. Yeah. I need to make sure that I'm not going to screw this up. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the quarter sawn, the, the bottom of this, if they're a little sloppy, it's okay. Um, these are really structural on this part of the table. So these are really meant to to add support for that crack and keep it from cracking anymore. Okay, I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is take this. I'm going to set my computer over here, if you don't mind. And uh, well, I'm not going to set it on that piece of wood, though. That's a little sketchy. There we go. So I did I did test fit this Let me put it over here. There we go. So I took this and test fit it. Um, it's fine. It fits in there. It's, it's a little tight, uh, which is fine. That's what it's supposed to be. Not too tight. I did bevel the edges of these just a little bit on the bottom. Um, I just took my chisel and kind of just shaved off a little bit just so they'll fit in here a little easier going in. Uh, we'll, we'll lather this with glue and make sure that it's all well lubricated with glue when we drive these home. But I need two more of these because I've got two slots here. I also want to put a bow tie on this part of the table. There is a crack that runs through here. So I want to make sure I get a bow tie inserted on there. Um, oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys. So I did find something 
uh, yesterday I was browsing around some stuff, watching some videos. There's a guy who does, um, if you're into doing any sort of um, cutting boards, there's a guy who has a site called MTM Wood on, uh, goodness gracious, on YouTube. And I've been watching his videos for a really long time. He's, uh, he's Russian. He lives in Russia, I guess, and stuff. But his videos, a lot of times, are, are translated into English. And, um, or he has subtitles or whatever to kind of show what he's doing. But he makes the most amazing cutting boards. And I actually saw that he has an Etsy site. And I was like, oh, I wonder if he's selling these. Well, I went to the Etsy site. He sells the plans for his cutting boards. And he makes like amazing like three-dimensional type stuff and everything else. So, let me show you. Um, go to the web share here. Click on that and see if that's going to show up on your site there. Hopefully, it is. Hopefully, you're going to see what I'm showing. Um, yes, you are. I just have to look at my page here so I can call it updates. Um, anyway, so this is his Etsy page. And if you just go into, um, why is this not playing? Does everything just want to break right now? I just, I just don't understand. Come on. Uh, hang on a second. Pause. My Twitch is not showing me my screen here. It's like really being weird. And I'm not seeing myself on here, but I see it on the others. What? Do I see myself on here? Hang on. I got to look at one of the other screens. Okay. So I'm looking at my Facebook screen and I can see it on there. So anyway, I just want to make sure you're seeing what I'm showing you here. Anyway, these are plans. These are not boards that you can buy, but they are plans for different um, different cutting boards. And you can see he's got some like crazy cool designs and stuff in here. And anything that has like pictures and stuff, he includes all of the CNC files to cut these things. And so you can you can change them if like you need to put in your own person's name or something or whatever. Um, but he has all of like the cut list things for making all of these different boards. So if you like this one, it looks really cool, right? Um, you can see that he has step-by-step -step PDF instructions and cut lists and everything else for this. There's actually, uh, I think there's a video showing him actually making these um, because he puts all these things on YouTube. So you can actually watch as he assembles one of these, which is really actually handy. You can go back and reference the YouTube video and kind of, you know, follow along as you follow along with your cut list. But anyway, that's the that's the, the board for this particular one. I think the plans for this, yeah, they're seven dollars. They're electronic delivery, so you get cut lists, you get uh, PDF files with all of the dimensionality that you need for any the instructions for how to assemble and put these together. And, um, really cool stuff. And reference that they downloaded the plans from this website from this guy so anyway this guy does amazing stuff you can check out his YouTube channel um, check out his Etsy shop if you're thinking this is something you want to make I mean the 3d stuff he does is really cool you can see some of his 3d effects um, he's got a Union Jack here that he's done and, you know American flag ones um, just just crazy stuff I mean he's he's an artist with with uh, cutting boards he really just does amazing But if you wanted to do, if, if you wanted to do, if you did want to get one that has, like, if you got a CNC and you want to get the uh, some of these crazy ones, like this line one, I watched this one the other day. This was, or he did a tiger the other day. But, um, he includes all of the CNC files, the V-carve um, profiles and stuff for, for making these. I mean, look at that. That's just look at, look at that. That's all. This is ingrained. This is not you know filled with epoxy or anything else each color is a different um a different species of 
species of wood that is laid in there to make these colors. And uh, yeah, like I said, this guy here, let me show you this. There you go. So you can see there's like one of the V-car profiles. Crazy stuff. So if you have, you know, a CNC and you want to do some stuff like inlays and stuff, it's great. First watch his videos, then come download the files. And yeah, uh, good, good stuff from this guy. So MPM Wood. really got into, I think a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of years ago he got into, um, uh, he got into doing the uh, CNC inlay work, that was not showing up, anyway, but um, yeah, so you'll see a lot more of that stuff, but even his 3D printed stuff, or, or 3D designs and stuff like that, just, just crazy talented design in here. And um, some of these are super complex with multiple, multiple glue-ups and stuff like that. But uh, I like this one too. This one's really cool. Is it going to show it? Uh, for whatever reason, they're not showing it. Um, anyway, this one's really cool with a little hexagons in there. Um, but go check it out. Really cool stuff. MTM wood. And um, I think you would be quite pleased with that. Uh, oh, and also my stuff. Basically my program cache. I had to reopen it so I can actually change back on the screen. So give me just a second. There we go. Okay. We are back and live. And what else? Does anything else want to go wrong today? Because I'm thinking it might. Uh, mercy. You know what? I need to go to my Twitch. Hang on a second. I'm going to edit this real quick. Because this is not edit. This is episode, what is this? 108? 107. Episode 107, I need to change this. I wish I could update this at the beginning like I do with my um, my uh, my Facebook when I launch it. I already have it set up with the title and everything, but um, if I was going right through Twitch, um, it would do that, but it's not. It's not. It's going through... Um, uh, 107, 107, there we go. Save, and that way it has the right title in there and everything doesn't have the same title. There we go. So I just fixed my Twitch titles there. In case you follow along with the titles, I don't know that it really matters. Uh, is this on? It is on. I don't know why this is not cleared. I don't have 26 chatters in there. I wish I could, I wish I could clear this. There's no clear. Um, for my stuff that I'm using here. So chat, can I clear the settings on here? No, yes, no, okay. Anyhow, all right, well, let's get to business of working on stuff. And maybe that'll make me feel better because right now I don't feel better. Why is this Twitch so far behind? I'm gonna restart this one because it's kind of lagging. And lag is not good. It doesn't help me to see where I am and interact with peoples and stuff. And vehicles coming by and everything else. All right. Yeah, what is the deal? Everything is so slow today. So slow. I'm going to dim this out. I have my volume turned way up. So if you do happen to drop into chat, I have my speech to chat turned on. My chat to speech. There we go. So I should hear you and be able to interact with you. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things here. First, what I'm going to do is I need to get this bottom done. I'm going to cut these other bow ties out of here. I'm going to put this on a piece of scrap wood so that I don't ruin my little thing there. Um, so let me find a piece of scrap that I can kind of mount this to. And... Uh, Let's see, actually, you know what, I'm gonna go dig into a piece of plywood here, because, you know, why not, or MDF or something that is a little bit more user-friendly, and actually, here we go, perfect. So I keep all this uh, quarter-inch leftover stuff, and I think this will be a good fit. Okay, UPS. Is that my 
Did UPS just show up? Yep, UPS just showed up. I didn't know I ordered anything on UPS. All right, hang on just a second. I don't want porch pirates taking my packages, so give me a second. Clear that out. That's really, oh, damn, that's fast. Nice. All right. Adorama used instruments gets, oh, bonus points because I bought something from them and it just showed up. I bought it like two days ago on eBay um, and, and doggone. It wasn't supposed to get here till next week and it's already here. So whoo UPS and Adorama, outstanding. Okay, I'm going to take this board right here. I'm going to double side tape it onto here. I'm gonna get some different double side tape. I've got some stuff that's a little thicker. Um, and I'm going to use that so I don't have to use my thin stuff, which is right here. And I'm almost out of it. So I want to keep that for doing my template. But this stuff's pretty good. I'm just going to get a big old piece of this. Um, the reason I don't use this as much, I, I could, but it's a little thicker. I prefer the thin stuff when I'm putting down templates just because I like it to be as close to the wood as possible when I'm using a plastic template like that or whatever. But um, let's see what we can do for this. I'm going to put this right up here. I'm going to put it right here. And then I might put a piece on this end because I'm going to be cutting at that end. So I have to, I have to put that whole template on top of here. So I have to have room to put the template on here and then I will clamp this down to my work surface right here. Um, and all this does is basically keeps, keeps my stuff from getting done. And the other thing is I do not want my bit to go all the way through because if it goes all the way through, that piece will break loose and then hit my bit and then it'll cut into the side of it. So I really don't want to go all the way through this wood. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to be cutting all the way through. And I can do that in a second. But right now, I just want to see about putting another piece of tape on here. Just a small piece. Because I want this to not shift or move while I'm using it. Um, template inlays are actually really cool and you can get a lot of different, like you can get designs and you know, it's not just about bow ties and stuff. So you can get some really cool stuff with inlay templates. Um, there's companies out there that make all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, there's a line right here from that Nick in my jointer, which still makes me sad that I didn't see that stupid nail in that board before I did that. Anyway, I'm going to try to get the backing of this stuff off. There we go. Stick, please, to the wood. I like to use my knife for this, my marking knife. Just get that little edge right underneath there. It's still not sticking very good. All right, and I'm just going to plant this right over here and give myself room to clamp this board down. So I'm just going to stick this on like this. Um, and this will give me room to uh, go down. I think I've got my depth set. So I'm going to check it with the template. So the thing you have to remember is that when you set your depth, you don't want to set it to the wood. You need to set it to the wood plus the template because, well, obviously the template is going to take up some space. So let me uh, plunge this down. See, that's hitting that board right there. Or is it? Let me see. Is it hitting? 
it's just, just a hair above, which is fine. Which is fine. Let me uh, raise that up so I don't ruin my bit. There we go. All right. Now I need to secure the template. This is good, not moving? Yeah. So now I'm going to secure the template to the piece of wood that we're going to cut our bow tie out of. And to do that, I'm going to use my thinner tape. I'm just going to tape here, here, and maybe a piece right here. Because the big thing is you don't want this stuff to shift either. Need to order some more of this tape. I really like it a lot. Problem is, it's kind of hard to find it. This is uh, IPG, so eye tape. Intertape. They've got all kinds of addresses here, but um, anyway, I like this stuff a lot. And like I said, I think I got this at um, at Uline. I think that's who who I bought it from. So I buy packaging stuff and everything from Uline uh, on occasion. They're not my everyday um, supplier of packaging because they're not always the cheapest, but I mean, you can find pretty much anything you want there. There's just a little residue I was scraping off. Put this right here. There we go. All right. Let me peel off the backing. We'll flip this around. We will get it secured. I'm gonna get my knife again. And just peel off the top. Now, um, you don't have to get fancy tape. Uh, you could probably do this with just scotch, double-sided tape. Um, I have seen people do that. Um, I don't know how much faith I put in scotch double-sided tape, but I'll tell you that one of my favorite table makers uses that to secure his templates and stuff down when he's um, going to be doing... Um, he doesn't do bow ties with his, but he does uh, um, like C channels and stuff for long tables and, and glue ups. And he just uses scotch and he uses it when he's doing his marking knife stuff. Like he hand cuts his, he'll put a piece of double side tape on here from like scotch, clear, transparent double side tape, puts it down on there, does his tracing, pops it off. So, I mean, you know, go with what you're comfortable with. For me, this is my most comfortable stuff because I do not want this shifting at all when I'm doing this. And that's the other reason why I will clamp this thing to my table. Get this on here. Clamp that down. I have these uh, gear clamps that keep this thing really glued to the table surface. That's really important. All right. So now I think I'm ready here. Um, generally what I will do is I will lower the bit down in, cut this out, and I do not take an entire run at this. I don't go full depth. I go partial depth and just work my way around because, which is, you know, you gotta be careful, but, um, I don't want to bust my bit or anything halfway through. I don't, I, I might have another one, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So, all right, let me put some ears on. And uh, I'm gonna just lower the thing here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put my ears on. I'm gonna turn my heater off back here. It's actually pretty warm in the shop. It was actually like 60 degrees this morning outside. So pretty nice, it's 64 now, it's 70 in the shop, feeling comfy. I'm going to plunge this down in. I'm gonna work it around and we will have the beginnings. And then when I get done, I will go back to my spot, plunge it further in. I may do it in two passes. I might do it in three. We'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. Let's see, is this one you like this one? I don't know. Is this a good view? We'll start with this view.
Hey, hopefully I didn't screw that up. I mean, I do have extra pieces of wood here, which is always nice. But I am going to grab my vacuum and I'm going to clean this out because I like to periodically clean out the stuff and keeps it from interfering with the bit passing around there again. Okay, and that is all for that. Um, got a nice cut, a little bump right here at the edge. I'm not really happy with that, but it should be okay. Um, so that was the first pass. As you saw, I used the awl, and that stuff gets packed in there pretty tight. So I like to give it a clean path to start with. And then all I'm gonna do is just come back and do this exact same thing, but plunge a little deeper this time. So just rinse and repeat. I've got a little, I think I got a bump or something on my template right there, which is causing me some concern, but it is what it is. Okay, and you can see, I'm, I'm not trying to muscle this thing through. I'm just letting it do its thing, but I have to be really careful that I, that I hug the edge of this profile. And that's why you'll see me a little bit. This thing is just, I think there's a piece of something stuck on here or something, or it shouldn't be that way. Anyway, um, I, I don't want this to wander into the bow tie. I, I got to keep it plastered against here. So especially when you're coming around these corners, it's like I, I slow down and really try to keep it married right to the edge of this thing. All right. Last time, this should be right to the bottom here almost. Little bit of smoke there, a slow down, it was going slow and it was burning the wood. I don't care. I don't care if the wood is burned because, well, it doesn't matter, right? It's on the edges of the inside of the bow tie. That actually last cut, that little piece of whatever there. Yeah, this is melting. I don't know why this is like, there's something melting there. My little template here is seen better days. And I probably will use a different template for doing this next one. I'm going to get one more out of this, and then um, I'm not going to use that middle template anymore. But let me pull this off up here. And then I'm going to take this over. Now you can see um, I, I went through in a little bit. This wood is not perfectly flat, so it went through just a little bit. It did cut into this, but that's why this is there. So it's just a piece of plywood and it, it doesn't matter if it cuts into that or not. I'm going to take this off because I do not reuse 
the tape. All right, so next step for me is to take this over to the, um, to the bandsaw over here. And we're just gonna quickly cut this section out here so that we can release it from the wood. And uh, let me grab my ears again. I'm gonna put my dust collection in the bottom here so we can try to keep that clean. This is a really easy cut. I just have to make sure that this blade does not touch any part of the bow tie. It just rides in that large void right there and separates this out. Okay, real quickly, let's get this done. All right, and that, there you go. So there it is released from the, uh, the out of focus, but you know, you get the idea. Um, and then I need to clean up these edges. So what I can do is a couple of different things. One is I would just hit this with a little sandpaper just to clean any fuzzies off of here because a lot of that's fuzz anyway. Clean the fuzz off. And then um, I will, oh, hang on a second. I gotta, uh, I, gotta, I gotta take a phone call. Why won't you, ah, crap. Hang on. Give me just a second, I'll be right back.
And I'm back. Sorry about that. I had a phone call I had to take. I don't normally take phone calls, but I had to take this one. And because, uh, you know, there's just some people you can't, you can't ghost. Um, or that you don't want to ghost. So I don't really ghost them. Like a lot of times I'll just let things go to voicemail and then I'll come back to it. I mean, half the time I don't answer my phone. Because if I don't recognize you, you ain't getting through. Um, all right, so what I'm doing right now is I am, I've got this cut out and I'm putting it, oh well, you can't see that. Um, and I put it in my clamp and what I'm doing is I'm just shaving the bottom edge here and it doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just shaving a little bit off the edge, kind of doing a little bit of a, a chamfer on the edges with a chisel. And the purpose for that is to uh, a, help it slide into the pocket a little easier. And B, um, it gives me some room for the glue to ride up the side a little bit. So it kind of serves two purposes. But I'm just trying to get just a little bit off this corner right here. There we go. And just shave it down so that it will fit and then uh i mean it fits but it's it's a tight fit which is good it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a tight fit now, someone else called me too another associate just called but i did not pick it up because i was on another phone call so we'll see if he left me a message or i'll just call him back later anyway I, I, no one ever calls me. That's the thing. It's like all of a sudden people are calling me. I never get phone calls. So that was kind of weird that I was getting phone calls this morning because I never get phone calls. It's really very rare. All right, I'm going to hit this with a little sandpaper here. And I'm just going to do, I'm not going to slide it into the slot. I'm just going to do a little quick kind of a test fit kind of thing here just to see. And that's pretty good because like I said, when I get ready to put these in, um, these are going to get smashed in with a, with a mallet. So I've got two of these done. All right. So there's two. Need one more for this one. So we will get our piece of wood over here and get this set up for this last bit that we want to put in here. Um, and then, like I said, I think I'm going to change size because this has been my primary, um, whoop, where am we going here? There we go. This has been my primary one right here um, that I've used. And I think I've worn this one out. It's getting, I think it's getting like little burn marks and stuff in here, which I don't understand because that collar shouldn't be spinning in here, but it feels like it's burned a little bit inside here. So it's not going to be a true fit. Um, I'm not sure why I'm getting all this stuff in here. But anyway, we are going to clean this off a little bit just to try to make sure that I'm not getting anything interfering with my corners here. And then I'm going to switch to a different one. I may go down one size for that one on the side there. And that's a much cleaner one. I've used this one a lot on a lot of different projects. And I like it a lot. It's a good size. I think this is a really nice size for a bow tie, um, for a table and such. But it also is kind of, <laughs> because it's the one I use all the time, it's getting a little worn out. So I may go to this smaller one for the next one. And we will uh, use that. But I've got one more to do on here before we move on to changing sizes. So I'm going to put some more tape on here and get this thing secured down to the table. Um, I am happy with the uh, putting the plywood underneath here. That was a good call because that would have either gone through to my little rubber mat or it would have, um, oh God, this stuff does not cut real well with these scissors though. Um, it would have gone through to the mat or worse down to my table and I don't want to mess up my table. So, to put this close here and go might put another piece down this end 
<clears throat> or maybe I'll try up top here. The, the wood is not exactly super flat, so uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see right here. All right. So let me get this healed off and then we will um, Gotta get it stuck down. You need that corner to be adhered to the wood. There we go. So you can get the top layer. Well, I just said that and then it, there we go. So you can get the little backing to kind of come off, but it needs to be stuck down. So sometimes you have to kind of buff it in a little bit. There we go. All right. So there is the, uh, <clears throat> let me get this camera right here. So here's the bottom with the tape, with the backing off of it. And once again, I'm just gonna stick this down. It doesn't matter where. Right here is fine. Work. And I'm just putting pressure on here to keep that, or to give that tape a good chance of really adhering to this. So there we go, that's not gonna move. And I might put a second clamp on here. It was shifting a little bit while I was doing this. So if I put a second clamp on here, which is really freaking overkill, but you know what? That's not going anywhere. All right, last, last hurrah for this template, I think. And then I will not be using it again. So let me find some places to put here, here, and a little bit down here. My paper tape here. And I just forgot where I said. If I go to the edge now, okay. I need to pay attention to where I'm putting this stuff. So one on the top and one on the bottom. Here. One underneath there. Here. That's good. And then I think one over here would be good just to kind of give some stability to it. The one over here, was that what I wanted to do? Let me see, yeah. So this will be resting on some other wood, kind of locks it in. All righty, let me get the backing off of these and then we will get this last one done. When I get this one done, what I will do is before I glue it in, I'm gonna create some sawdust. I need some walnut sawdust and that is so that when we glue these in, we will fix any spots around the edges that don't quite fit perfectly. We will just get a little sawdust into them and it will fill the void, a little sawdust and glue. will fill the void and should provide us with a nice, I'm gonna go up a little higher with this one just so I can get that tape on there really well. Right there, that's good. But anyway, a little sawdust and glue really helps fill the void. So if you look at this one right here, there were a couple of spots. I could have done a little better job right here, but um, there were some opening areas in here and I did the same thing with some, I had some cherry dust and such that was actually came from this board and just sprinkled it in there along with some glue and really fills it up and makes that look like a really nice tight bow tie. I mean, it's tight, but it, kind of just makes it look like a very precision cut bow tie because it's filling any little voids and such that we have. So that's always a good thing. Alrighty, got my ears. Let me get my dust over here. Just so I can clean out my path as I go. Put this out of the way, get my chisels out of the way and stuff. I'm getting very messy over here. I got so much garbage sitting around that it's gonna start getting in my way. All right, like this in my way, okay. 
All right. Need this stuff like it's there. Okie dokie dokie. Everything is secured, not moving. That's moving a little bit. I don't like that. Stop moving. We're good. We're good. Get this here. The collar's good. Make sure this is tight. Okay. And make sure we've got lots of space here. See how that moves? That's disturbing me a little bit. I'm going to clamp this piece underneath. I'm going to get a thin clamp here, I think. I think this will fit. Will this fit? It will. So I'm going to take this clamp right here and just clamp my table down right here. Just putting a clamp underneath this back edge to keep that from tipping. Oh, shoot. Hang on just a second. I'll be right back. Doggone it. Oh my God, children, they're, they're going to be the death of me. I swear to God. Wow. Okay. Okay, this is much more stable now. Ugh, unlike my son, who is not stable. <laughs> life. All right, I'm going to cut this last one out here and get on with my life. Um, I'm going to try to keep this very flat and stable on here. Um, and uh, yeah, if I mess it up, I've got more wood. Yeah, this template is getting really rough. I can tell you, it is not feeling nice and smooth going around there. All right, I'm just gonna get this one going and try to be as smooth as I can going through this thing. Clean this one out.
All right, I think this will be the last pass for this. I think what's happening is that this thing is just getting so hot. And as I move through there, it's actually melting the plexi is what's happening. Uh, even though this collar is not touching anything, just the, the friction of the bit inside is heating it up and creating a melting force. So anyway, that'll be the last of this one. You can see the smoke and stuff because it's hot and it's burning, so it's getting hot. There's a lot of a lot of heat in there. All right, let's take this one over to the table or to the bandsaw, and uh, we will get it done once again. A little bit of cutting through, kind of went through a little bit, not much, just a little bit through there. Um, which is good because it keeps it secured into the, the main piece of wood without, uh, excuse me, without uh, risk of it breaking loose and then moving around as I'm cutting because that could damage the main piece. You have that issue with CNC machines um, at times where it does the same thing. All right, back over here, put our dust collection back in and cut this out. Okay, and there's our last one cut out. And we can take this over to the workbench where I am going to uh, basically just clean off the, uh, the fuzzies on here, first of all. We'll get those cleaned up. All the little fuzzy areas from the bottom of the bit and from the bandsaw itself. And then I will clean up these edges with my chisel because they all didn't, it didn't cut flush all the way through. So I do need to clean up these edges. And then I'm gonna, which this is really easy. I'm just basically, all I'm doing is taking my chisel, keeping it flat against the surface here as a reference and then shaving off these little bits that didn't get cut because it didn't go all the way down into it. And there's kind of a little teeny lip going all around this thing. So like I said, if I just kind of follow this flat reference area here, good. Clean up that edge really well for me. This one, I need to kind of take it down a little bit here. And kind of come back across here. And then I'm going to come through and, um, like I said, just kind of chamfer the edges here, like I did the last one. Oops, that little piece broke off, but I don't really care. Because, like I said, chamfer. 
here. I'm going to work this edge. Now, I could also do this with uh, different methods. I could use a block plane. I could, I could sand this down with some rough sandpaper here on the corner. Um, because this is the bottom. But uh, we're going to uh, try to do it with a chisel here and be nice and professional. It would be smart as if I took these off like that would be awesome. All right. And work that out. That's actually a nice one right there. I like that one. I have to flip it around, constantly flip this thing around and then make sure I keep the edge reference that I want to be the bottom. Because if you chamfer the top, you've screwed the whole thing up. And like if you do one side and then you flip it and then you accidentally do the other side, you're kind of hosed. So anyway, this doesn't have to be pretty. It only has to be pretty at the top, not at the bottom. Did I just do this one? I did do this one. End grain is a pain in the rear. Just see if I can slice me some end grain here. Go without slicing my fingers. Always the preferred method. Slice the wood, not your finger. And this last side. And then we will get to gluing these things in. Let's see what that looks like. Flip. Go. And I can always, oh, I, I didn't do this end right here. Ugh. Last side, this one right here. It's gonna be a pain in the rear. So I'm gonna work it slow so that I don't get any big breaking or chipping out of here. Not a race, you know. Okay, all of the sides have been chamfered, so they look kind of like this. So you can see the chamfer running around the edge of that thing. It's it's really slight. It's not much, but it just kind of gives a nice little edge for the glue to fit into. So we now have. One, two, three over here. So you can see them resting inside here. And like I said, before I glue these, what I'm going to do is get myself some, some walnut sawdust. Sometimes I find that it's easier to do sawdust on a finer grit. Like you'd think, oh, just use 60 grit, it'll work really fast, but that's not always the case. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this right up here on the table surface, and I'm just gonna take a piece of, this is 120 grit. Let's see how much damage we can do with 120 here. I need a lot, or quite a bit. I'm just going to do it like this. And I'll dump all this sawdust on here because this is walnut. We want to have nice walnut sawdust to put around the edges. Um, so I'm just using this piece of 120 here. And we're just going to sand, 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 create a bunch of sawdust. Like I said, I've tried doing this with some larger grit, thinking, oh, well, that would be faster and easier, but it's not, you don't always get that result. Like here, let me grab, this is a 60. 
So let's see what we get from 60, because I don't think 60 produces like the effect that we want here. Because honestly, 60 is not impacting as much of the wood. Like when you've got 120 or 220, there's a lot more of the little abrasive particles on the paper contacting the wood. So yeah, this, this, this is not as effective. So you really want a lot of abrasive material touching that wood and creating, let's see, we got here 80. There's a, I don't know what this is. I can't even read it, but it's pretty, well, that's pretty rough. Let me find a nice, here we go. So let's try this one now. This one might be a little too fine. But it's actually creating a lot of sawdust. And I'm just using these crap, craps, these scraps that I um, took off of the, uh, the main board that we cut these out of. So all this wood matches. I might mix in just a little bit of cherry with it as well, just to kind of blend it. Um, and that's something you can do is, you know, if you've got a dark wood is mixing a little bit of light wood, it kind of breaks up the, um, the appearance a little bit and doesn't make it look like you filled it in because it, it'll be kind of speckly and just like wood. It's not solid one color. It has some variation in the texture and the color and everything else. And I did not come up with that. That was uh, Cam at uh, Blacktail Studios. Get this. And just keep pushing that. Well, I'm just gonna keep getting this dust kind of worked over here so I have enough to really make an impact here when I get ready to get ready to glue these things in. I don't want to have to go searching for more sawdust because I didn't have enough. So always rather have too much here. Pushing that over in the pile. That's a pretty good pile of dust right there, but I still want more than that. So I'm just going to keep, keep sanding. Exciting, isn't it? Very exciting stuff. Very exciting. And like I said, I can mix in um, a little bit of cherry dust, which I have in this bag right here. This is from my um, uh, I don't know, from one of my sanders that I used to flatten this, uh, my belt sander. Ooh, that's a lot of cherry. Um, so I, I don't need all of that maybe. Take half of that and kind of just mix some of this in together and it just does a nice little, little puree, a little mix of color texture there. All right. So I think that's enough. That's a, that's a pretty big pile. I know you can't really see that, but it's a pretty good pile. So now what I need to do is get my glue and I'm going to get a glue brush. Let me find a glue brush here because I really want to brush this into all the surfaces um, <clears throat> and get them 
completely covered. So let me clean all the glue remnants off of my uh, brush here. Okay, I really need to get some acid brushes just so I can, you know, you can wash them off a couple times and reuse them. And then when you're done, you clip the little metal handles off and recycle them. And then just throw the horsehair brush away. Kind of a nice way to go with those. Um, the silicone's nice, but after a while, the silicone little bristles, just they just kind of start busting off. And they're... they're you, you start having less and less bristle to work with here, but uh, where are we? There we go. So less and less bristle to work with, but uh, anyway, this will do for now. All right, so I've got my pieces here. And I might need to just clean this corner off just a little bit, just to get that fit. Let's see here. Okay, that's better. It needs to be a good fit in here. Okay, feels pretty good. All right, I'm gonna start with this one. And the thing is, there's a big crack in here, so I really have to make sure, let's see if I can go a little farther up here so you can see. So there's a crack that runs right up through here. You can see that at the bottom of your screen there. And I don't want to glue inside the crack, obviously, because it's not going to adhere to anything. So I really need to make sure that I'm getting the glue on the surfaces where it matters most. And so I'm going to take this with my little brush here, and I'm going to put that all over the bottom area and then make sure that it's going up the sides and in the corners. This, and same on this edge. And I'm not worried about too much glue. You don't wanna, you don't wanna fill the void because, you know, with too much, because you want this to seat down to the bottom. You don't want glue interfering with how far this actually goes in, but uh, you want enough that you're going to get a good adhesion, so you'll know. It's not that difficult. All right. It is time for the Mighty Mighty Mallet right here, and I'm just going to hold my tabletop here. There we go. That is seated, and then I'm going to go to the next one here, get some glue in this one, and then when I come back, and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put glue around the edges, and then we will fill these in with the dust. I need to make sure I get this all up the sides here. So this is where a brush really does better. Usually I'm a finger with the glue guy, but in here you really want to get it all into the corners and everything. So I will not be using the finger with this one. All right. And let's see if I need any, just kind of, these corners are just a little sharp. And I just need just a touch. Not I'm not rounding them over. I'm just giving them just a touch. There we go. All right. Two. That is seated all the way down. And you can see these things are resting about, depending on where they've been smacked in here. They are anywhere from, you know, an eighth to, well, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So they're not completely flush. You don't want that. You want them to be above so that you can come back and use the tool of your choice to take their, their height down to the table level. So generally I will use like a, um, 
a plane and knock them down close and then finish them off with a sander. I don't like to take it all the way down to the surface because um, I'm going to give it a little bit of glue right there. Cause see if we can glue this little thing down here. Piece of wood right there. There we go. Um, you don't want it all the way flush when you use your plane because then you'll get into the table surface. So, all right. Last one. Let's get this in here. And give it a little smack. I gotta tell you, I love my mallet. Because <laughs> I used to do that with a little round one. And this little thing right here, not really great for doing stuff like we just did. So this big, this big hoss of a mallet right here. Yes, very nice. All right, I'm going to work glue into these corners right here. I need to get glue into those corners. Um, so I'm just actually gonna take the glue here because I do have some areas that are just not great. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna force that wood into these edges where I think that I've got some open spots here. So I'm just, oh no, God, I just blew away half my dust. I'm awesome. I am the world's smartest woodworker, or maybe I'm not. I'm an idiot. It's okay, you can say it. I understand. I know. I understand. All right. All right, what? What? No, Harbor Freight, I don't need your tools right now. What I do need is to get some of this dust worked in over here on these edges where I know I had some bigger gaps. All right, I'm gonna work this stuff in to that glue and then work it in, really get it in there. Try to really pack it in. I might get my knife here and just really pack that into those edges because when all this sands off, this will all dry. And then when it does, um, I can take all this extra sand, uh, um, stuff and put it over on this one. Um, when this all dries, um, you won't even see it. It'll be seamless. So this is like caulk for your wood that perfectly matches what you're doing. And all of this is going to get sanded, so you don't even worry about how it looks on the surface because it's all going to work its way in and then turn hard and hopefully match your wood grain really well. Let me get a little bit more over here. But I'm trying to work this all into the cracks here and make sure that I've got a really nice tight packed in to these, just these edges here. So using my knife here to really work this down inside those edges where I know it was just off a little bit. It's hard to see. I think there's a little gap right here. So I need a little bit more over here. Okay. And I'm gonna get a little bit more dust over here. have some other areas to do, but get this dust worked in here. It does quickly, when you get it mixed with that glue, it does quickly turn into like a paste and you can really push it into those edges. Now, not everybody does that, but I found that that really kind of seals the deal. All right. See if I can get these other areas here where I have glue. This one was pretty big. Can't believe I just blew all that stuff off the table after I spent so long trying to get it, you know, like made. 
but I never said I was the smartest guy out here in the shack. Nope, not my claim to fame. Um, looking to see if I have a little scrapey card somewhere, but I do not see one. Sometimes I'll make a little credit card or a gift card thing that I use for scooping and such, but I do not see one here. All right, let's work this in right here and around this side. And I can actually take some of this dust right here and work it in as well. Okay. here because remember this is cherry dust that came from this tabletop so I can mix some of this cherry in here uh, along with the walnut and it should make a very good joint now that did not look it didn't look open before but now I kind of see a little gap right there and I want to get that closed up so just put some more over here So typically um, my stuff fits a little better than this, but I think because that um, template has become worn out, um, I'm not getting a really, really nice fit anymore, which is a shame um, because it was, okay, nice and flat. I need to mark the chisel. Um, this was at one point in time, just picture perfect kind of stuff, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I think that it has uh, kind of gotten to the point now where it's just too rough and I'm not getting consistent um, cutouts like I used to. And that's a shame, but you know, these, these things don't, these templates don't cost very much and I can, I can get another one. That was my favorite size though, for that particular one just seemed to work really well. All right, this looks good. Everything looks good. I didn't check this other edge here. Oh, all this glue here, come on. It's supposed to be dust and paste. Okay, those look rough right now. You're looking at them going, ew, they don't look very good, but um, they will look fantastic once this stuff dries. I will hit it with a, um, a plane and I will hit it with sandpaper and it'll look fantastic. Um, all right, so I need to, what do I need to do? Um, Look at my phone, that's what I need to do. Because you know, that's what we do. <laughs> okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is go back to this section over here. Because like I said, I think I want one more. I'm gonna get rid of this dust. Because, you know, I've got more. I've got one more right here that if I can get this template to sit across there, I will use this, yeah. So we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna do it right, maybe two more, because this thing is kind of wide. So there's, the crack runs from here to here. Um, it swirls around what used to be probably a branch coming off of this thing. So it's just circles, right? And it's cracking radially from there along a line right here. So if I did one here and one here, two smaller ones, I think that would probably keep this from cracking anymore and from being an issue in the future, which is what I'm after with these bow ties. They're not just, I mean, they're decorative, but they're decorative with a purpose. And that's generally why we use bow ties. Some people use bow ties to kind of, now I can't do this side. I wanna put it right here, but until I flatten this one, my template's hitting that, so I can't go into that one, but I can do this one right here. And what I might do, what I might could do is um, do the same thing I did with the last one, which is find my pencil. 
Not always an easy thing to do. Pencil, pencil. There it is. And my ruler. And I'm going to draw a line to keep these straight and in line. So I basically can get a line on the top of the template here. When I line this up, I'm going to have this the same distance going all the way across this crack here. And I want it at the same angle. So I'm going to draw a line uh, on the bottom with this ruler now that will basically be what I match the, uh, the edge of the template up with. And that will help me to keep these in line and just give it a more pleasing aesthetic, I think. So this one will go right like that. And then the next one will go up here. Once I get this flattened, it'll go up on this side. And that will look good. Um, so the other thing I need to do is figure out how deep I want this to go. These do not need to be as deep as the last ones. This is, um, first of all, the pocket. So the pocket's not going to be as deep. So what I'm going to do is push this all the way down. Go on this camera right here. So I'm going to push this all the way down. And then what I want to do is establish a bottom out for this and then raise that up a little bit so that I'm not cutting as deep. So I'm going to let this rise back up. I'm going to come over here to this stop and push it up a little bit. And if I move this down, I can see how far I'm going to move it. I just want to move this uh, about like that. Okay. And then I'm going to lock this in. So now what happens is this stop right here, lock that down. Hang on a second. I'm going to raise it just a little bit more here. Okay. So this stop right here is going to impact this little point right here. And when I go down with this, it'll stop it from going any further than that. And then I have room to take a little bit deeper cut when I cut the, um, the bow ties. So this is just strictly for doing the, um, the pocket. Now, the other thing that I need for this is, let me see if I can find a piece of paper towel to clean that off. I need to put the collar on the, uh, the bearing there because the collar gives me the spacing to push it in about an eighth of an inch more. I'm just gonna clean this off, make sure there's nothing in there. Is this loose? I don't know how this thing keeps getting loose. You would think it would be tight by now. I tighten it down a lot, but I can only tighten it by hand. Yeah. Anyway, get this thing cleaned off here. Make sure there's no residue or anything that's going to interfere with it. And then I go in here and grab this little collar. So this is part of the kit. So it's this little collar right here. And that slips over this guide and basically pushes the whole thing out about another eighth of an inch. So that when I run inside of the template, I'm running against this now collar on the inside of that template and not the smaller little collar that is what you use for cutting out the actual bow tie. All right. Now I'm going to put this template down. I'm going to get my little tape here. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just move forward and we'll give this glue a chance to set up and I don't know that I'll be able to flatten this one in time to do this. So I'm going to come back over to here and I'm just going to put this template down here. Get a couple of pieces. I don't have to go crazy with this. So let's see, I can put a piece here and here. And I can put one here. That should be enough to keep this seated. Let's see. This is going to go right like that. 
Yep, so I'm gonna put one here and then I will basically try to space, let's see here, equally space this on the other side. There's a little, like I said, a knot here, so I'll try to put one equally spaced on the other side just to kind of make sure that it is, so I'm not gonna go that far over. I'm gonna go right here. I think that looks good. And then we're gonna make sure that we don't uh, go too far in and all the other stuff. Will you rate your, oh, you don't want me rating you, Marketplace. You didn't deliver my goodies. It's like, hi, this is Amazon. Would you rate your transaction? Yeah, unfulfilled. That's my transaction rating, unfulfilled. All right, let me clean off my, Sorry, I'm still a little, I'm a little salty still. Sorry, just a little salty. Um, that is needing a little touch up. Just needs a little touch up here. Hang on a second. My, uh, my knife just needs a little touch up. So I, this is a 300 grit diamond stone and I'm just gonna take the bottom of it here. First, I'm going to clean the bottom of it off here. Just keep it flat. Clean that bottom edge off. There we go. So I'm trying to get nice and clean and sharp over here. And really, that's the edge you need to worry about the most, not the angle. It's the flatness of the bottom. When you're doing a chisel or a planer blade or whatever, everybody thinks it's the angle and everything else. The angle controls how deep and you know how the wood curls off and everything else but the cutting edge is actually based off the bottom of your chisel or your iron plane or whatever so you want that to be as flat and straight as it can be across the point where it actually is um, contacting the wood so i see so many people working on the bevel but they don't take the time on the flatness of the underside and that's really the cutting edge so make sure you get that bottom flat across that edge where it's cutting. And you really won't need to do that much work on the bevels. It's like this thing is pretty much good. And then I can just kind of do some raking across here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Froggy in the throat. Um, I just need to set this down somewhere and hang on a second. I just don't want it to slide. I just need to do a couple of uh, sharpenings on here on the edge. So I'm just gonna take the bevel here and just pull this backwards. And I'm missing my edge completely, so. And it's closer. Closer. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna do the same on this edge because this is a dual bevel. And one more on this edge. And then on the bottom one more time just because we like to make sure that we're not getting any, there we go. All right, and this thing is very sharp on those edges once again, and that's, that's the way you touch it up. Um, this is a double bevel knife. There are different types of knives available out there, so, you know, whatever is appropriate for yours, but, um, it is a good idea to touch up your edges for your marking knives every now and then, just to make sure that you're getting a nice, sharp, crisp line when you need to mark something. My purpose right now is to get these tape edges peeled up. And so I wanted a nice, crisp point to get under there. And even still, it's kind of a pain in the rear sometimes. Come on, there we go. And last one, make sure that's really adhered down in the corner. Just grab that little edge and up we go. Hooray, all right. Let me get this lined up here. 
And I have to be careful now because it is now got the exposed sticky side. So I want to make sure I get my line here. And then we'll place this down. And then I will lock these in like this. There we go. All right. Now the beauty of doing this is we're doing a pocket. So it's just trace the outside. Um, we're going to trace the outside of the template and then we just hog away the stuff from the middle and it's much easier to do. In fact, I'm going to sit down while I do this because it's much more comfy this way. And I'm going to put my ears on here. And now I am not going to hog out all of this material at once. So I'm going to raise my bit up and then just put it in partly. And I have to remember to go in the right one. So this one over here, not this one again, but this feels so much smoother. <laughs> it's amazing how much smoother this feels. All right, let me go in, make a partial and then I'll hog out material and then we'll go maybe three passes for this one. And then once again, this thing gets clogged up. So I like to just give it a little chance to be cleaned out um, and give a little bit more of a clear path. Um, and I need to find my remote here. What do I do with that? Did I see where I put my remote? There it is. Clean out some more of this.
All right, I believe that is going to do it. Let me clean it out and see. Yeah, that's a clean pipe. I mean, there's a couple little chips that I can get out with a chisel, which are easy to do. And probably the easiest way to do it is with a chisel because trying to hit these little pieces with the router bit, hit and miss sometimes. But that's a nice clean pocket now inside here. Make sure it's clean right there. Uh, nice clean pocket. And this is ready for us to cut a, uh, a bow tie for that. Hang on a second. All right, so I'm gonna take this one off of here. And you can see, hopefully you can see that. We got a nice clean pocket right here. And I'm just gonna give a little, little love on the edges here just to make sure that it's nice. But that's actually really good. I didn't go very deep with this one. Um, Depth wise, I mean, I'm just gonna, this is just a rough depth, but uh, depth wise on this one is, uh, what do we got? Uh, four, five, six, seven sixteenths, so under half an inch. And then I can take my, uh, my bow ties out of this one right here. I've got a board right here that should be, uh, I think I can take them out of here. Let me see. Should have enough depth to do it with this one. And uh, I can get a couple of bow ties out of this piece. I'm gonna take this over to the jointer though and just joint this down so that I have a flat edge so that it doesn't, see how tippy this is? I want it to be flat when I set it down so when I put the template on here, I can, I don't have to worry about it tipping. So it'll be nice and flat. And really I need to put this right here. Um, I'm not gonna cut this out yet. I really wanna do this and I need to see if maybe I can, this might have dried long enough. Let me see here. I'm gonna get my plane here and plane this down just a little bit. Let me move this off to the side so I'm not like knocking things over. So this is my, uh, my number 62 uh, low angle uh, jack plane, which I, this, this is a fantastic little plane right here. Um, I got this one at uh, Woodcraft. So this is their Wood River version. Um, they make a, uh, a, Stanley makes one, this is based off of the Stanley design, but there's quite a few makers who make these exact same sizes. I'm gonna clamp this puppy down right now because it's walking on me a little bit. I mean, it's to be to kind of, you know, I am pushing my forces on it. So let me uh, see if I can get this clamped down to my work table here and just keep it from sliding as much as it is. Cause I just wanna bring this down. Like I said, I don't want to go crazy. Just get it down so it's close to the surface, but not all the way to the surface of the table. Because I don't want... Oh, I don't want to uh, dig into the table top. So I've got about a sixteenth to go here. And that looks pretty good. Need a little bit more. Getting close. Down here, it's a little higher on this end than it is this end. So I'm just gonna let the sole touch the table and that will kind of ease it into this edge. Bring that down a little bit. Then uh, when I get done, with all that, what I will do is get my sander. And let the sander do the rest of the work. So that is just about to the bottom. Now some people actually leave these a little bit proud, depending. 
Um, I'm not going to because there's going to be table legs going across here, so they need to be flush. Um, some people will leave them a little bit proud. Um, if they hand cut, I think that's a better deal. That looks pretty good. All right. I just need to get this flat enough so that I can put my template down there, which it might be right now without me having to sand it. So I might not need to get the, the sandpaper involved because I could probably get that to sit flat enough for my template because it's just the edge of the template that was hitting it. And it might be flat enough for my template to sit there and let me cut this second pocket out here. Let me clean up this mess a little bit. But you can see how these two are still raised up. This one is almost flush to the table. And it looks really nice. My uh, fill job did a nice job. Couple of little teeny tiny pieces, but honestly, I mean, they look really good. If I'd hand cut these, you know, I think they might might look a little better. But honestly, um, not too. I'm not. I'm not upset with that at all. And also because this is the underside of the table, if they don't look perfect, no one's going to see it. All right, let's get this and look at where we're going to line this one up to. So I think. If I measure how far from the, the, the center of this little bullseye right here to the middle of my bow tie that I just put in here is about, is it about two and a quarter inches? It's about two and a quarter inches. So if I go two and a quarter inches this way, and I'm just going to take my pencil and make a mark here. From the bullseye, I'm going to go two and a quarter, just right here. And that way I can center this, oops, put this on my line and I would center that. And then that's going to give me a, a nice standardized kind of symmetrical look to things, which is how I like things to be. It's just in my DNA that I like things to be symmetrical. Um, I'm not... I'm not much for imbalance. I like balanced and symmetrical. That's kind of just the way I like things. You may be different. You might like them to be, you know, cantilever to each other and just kind of offset and, you know, a little bit more randomized in their location. And that's okay, because you do you and that's all right. Like I said, just for me and my little bit of, I mean, I'm not completely OCD, but that's just one of those things that I just prefer when things look a little bit more symmetrical. So I'm going to, let's see, take one more look at this and see where I want my line to be right about there. And then this line up there. Okay, so, and then I'm just checking to see if this is interfering, but this, it's pretty, it's just right under the corner. And it's, like I said, it's flat enough that I can do this without a problem. So I'm going to put tape on here and some here and here. And then we will move this along. I am just about out of this tape. Sadness. Deep sadness. I do love this tape. All right. So a piece here. Um, did he leave me a message? I don't think I had a message there. I got a call from a friend and did he send me a text? No. I don't know why people don't text me. It makes life a lot easier if they would. Um, voicemail. Oh, he did send me a, he did give me a voicemail. Let's see what he says here. I order for you to, oh, yeah. So if you're a woodworker, people don't necessarily pay attention to what it is you make. 
They just think that because you're a woodworker, you can make anything out of wood. And that's not always the case. Like, honestly, like my buddy had his mother's sewing machine and he knows that I make these sewing machine bases. And he's like, hey, can you make her a sewing machine base? Because she passed away and he wants to have her sewing machine out and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. But then I get other people who are like, hey, uh, can you make me this cabinet? Or can you make me this? Now, I'm just making that up. They haven't really said that. But I have had some really weird requests from people to make things. And I'm just like, that's really not. But, well, you're, you could do that. Come on. It's, you could do that. And I'm like, okay. So here's the thing. I think this is an important lesson to learn when you're a woodworker people will want you to make things out of wood because that's just, they don't understand that not every project is the same. They just see that, well, you cut and glue wood and this is made out of wood. That's what I want it made out of. So you should be able to do this. And they don't understand that either A, it's outside of your comfort zone and you really don't feel like you can do it. Or B, maybe outside your skill set and you don't feel comfortable that you can do it. C, you're busy and you don't have time to do it. Um, and you know, there's all kinds of reasons, but what you really need to learn how to do, and I've had to do this before, and it, it's painful because you don't want to disappoint people. But I'm telling you right now, learn how to say no. Say it in a nice way, obviously, because these are your friends or your family. But you learn. You have to learn how to say no. Now, some people you're just not going to say no to. Um, but I've I've often referred people to other other makers who I know make what they want when it's not something that I make. Um, if it's something simple, I will do it. Um, like my neighbor across the street, I love her, and she uh, she had a. Uh, a burner cover for her stove that her husband had made and her husband passed away a few years ago and she wanted to know if I could she got her countertops replaced and it didn't no longer match her countertops and she wanted to know if I could relaminate it and she bought the laminate I had never done lamination before in my life but I'd watch videos <laughs> um, so I felt like you know what let me give it a shot because honestly she had no one else to turn to to do that kind of stuff and I was like you know what I think it's within my skill set um, anybody else and I would have said, nope, that's not something I do. I'm sorry. You need to go look elsewhere. So really you need to learn how to either A, say no, or B, figure out what exactly it is that you want to do um, in terms of, you know, your skills, your time, because the time's another big one. I mean, and then, and then are you going to charge them, you know? Because you might feel guilty about charging your friends or your family, and what should you charge them? If it's something you don't normally do, you don't have a normal price point to charge people. So there's a whole lot of complications, but it all comes about from the fact that you are a woodworker. So I'm just letting you know you're going to have to figure that stuff out one day. And if you have figured it out, let me know how you handle it. You can throw it in a comment or whatever, because I'd like to know, because I still deal with it sometimes, and it's just, it's uncomfortable, you know? It just feels uncomfortable. And I get it. They're like, they don't have a skill. They don't have that skill. And so they don't really have any way to do the thing that they need to do. And it's not something they can usually run out and buy. Um, I had a friend who's like the other day, he's like, hey, I've got this chair. And he starts describing to me and he's got it, the legs popped out. I guess, you know, maybe he had dowel joinery for like a tenon, but instead of a tenon, it had a dowels. And it had popped out and he wants to re -glue. He's like, what type of clamp should I use? And I'm like, how? I, I don't know. So anyway, these are just the things. Okay, you know what? Enough of that. Let's, let's go in here and finish this pocket because I really want this done.
All right. That looks good. Let me clean this out just real quick. And I'll pop this off. All right, so now we have our two other bow ties, well, the pockets for the bow ties cut. And from there, we can move on to actually cutting out the bow ties themselves. It was a good idea to move to this, this uh, next sized uh, bow tie. It's a little smaller, um, but I think um, it's uh, worth it in the long run because it is, uh, much cleaner. The, the pocket itself is very clean and allowed me to really get a really nice, crisp, smooth cut through there. And now I can do the same, hopefully, with this piece of walnut. Now this piece of walnut is a very straight grain. Now if you'll notice on the end here, see where I'm pointing? There's a pith right there. That is a hole <laughs> that runs through to right here. So you can see it kind of on this end and it goes to right here where my finger is. So from here to here, I will not be using any of this wood, but all of this wood through here is very good. And I will cut these bow ties this way on here so that I utilize the lateral grain here, but this is also very vertical right here, which means this is quarter sawn. And that is a very, uh, very um, tough, um, very structurally sound piece of wood, unlike a flat grain or something. This is not going to shrink or do anything weird. Uh, quarter sawn is really great that way. Um, and it will resist movement So and provide that strength in there. Now I do have some ugly spots. I got a little ugly spot right here. So I will probably cut these two out of this end of this board right here. It's a little cleaner on this side. I got a little bit of an ugly thing going on here. But right here, I can get... I can get two of these out of here without any issue. So I'm going to flatten this right now. Um, I'm gonna go over to the jointer and uh, flatten this out. I don't know if you can even see me on this camera over to jointer, maybe. Um, I, I'm not even gonna, I'm just gonna walk over here and do this real quick. It's not worth me moving a camera. I'm just gonna run this through a couple of passes to get it flat on the bottom because it has bandsaw marks on it. So you can sort of, you can see me over here, I'm over, see me over here? Not really. <laughs> I'll turn my camera, because you know what? That's kind of annoying when you're like not watching. Yeah, there we go. All right. And there we go. So there's my jointer over there with its needing to be replaced blades. And uh, oh, great. You know, you get some really weird spammy comments in YouTube and it's like I'm running over to see, oh, did somebody ask a question? Nope, it's just a spammy comment. All right, but I believe you can see me now over here or you can see my headless figure. I can bend way down, but honestly, this is where the work's happening. And I just popped my little fuse thing here. All right, well, I just popped my fuse. I don't know why but uh, I got to run down and turn it back on. So down to the breaker box I go. I'll be right back. So weird. That almost never happens. Uh, the small shop, the bad electric. Gotta love it. Gots to love it. Oh. Well, get my steps in, get my exercise in, running down to my basement on the other side of the house. I'll turn my lights back on and yep, here they are. Lights are on. I don't even have anything else running. That's the crazy part. There was nothing else running. I just went to flip the switch. Oh well, at least it's not connected to my computer so it doesn't kill my live stream.
All right, that's enough of that. It doesn't need to be great, it just needs to be flat enough for me to uh, run on here. And actually, that little, that little niblet right there from where my blade is nicked is driving me crazy. Um, it's not really interfering with anything, but I can feel it every time I reach over here. It's just, I can feel that little raised area right there. It's just, ah, uh, drives me nuts. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this off real quick like this. And I'm just gonna wipe it off to get the dust off of here. Okay, so back over here, um, it's got a little bit of a saw marks and stuff, but it's flat for the most part, which means I can now do just like we did before and adhere it to the, uh, to the piece of uh, plywood over here. I'm just trying to clean this off. Actually, you know what? That's kind of, let me do it this way. Far more efficient. Okay, so I've got my piece of wood here. We know that we want to probably try to get that out of this end right here, right? So this is the end right over here where we want this first one to come out of. We're going to grab this template. And what's the easiest way for me to do this? Probably right here. Probably right here. Um, go up a little higher so I have some room for some tape here, here, and here. Uh, I might be able to put a piece of wood under here just to kind of stabilize this thing. Let me see here if that's going to be... Okay, so that'll stabilize it so that it's not going to walk around. Um, and then the other thing I want to look at is, am I going to be able to get another one out of this edge? So let me, let me just get the line here because I know about how far into this thing it cuts. And I put this one here. Yeah, it's gonna get right into that part right there. I might come over to here and take it out of this far edge over here. That actually I think is gonna be my plan. So that being the case, I can move this over a little bit. V-A-S-K dot P-E-C-H. I don't even know what that means. Why would you put that in my comments? I don't even know what that means. I don't even understand. I wonder if I can like block them. No, well, let me block them. Oh, well, I don't have moderation set up in there. Oh, people, why do, we, why do you have to be that way? Why? Let me move this over, check something. There was a network error. Please reload your page. That's awesome. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this last one out here. Um, I need two of them, but I think I'm gonna cut this last one just in case you didn't see me do the other ones. This will give you an idea of how we do this. And I'm gonna get my template cleaned off here so the tape will stick. And grab my paper tape, my marking knife, my scissors, and this is the template that we're working with right here. So let me go ahead and get the tape on here. Um, oops, oops, oops. This side, this is downside right here. So make sure I do this on the correct side here. Ah, uh, hang on. I can do one over here. Just like to make sure I get the tape in the right spots where it does the best, the most work. And I don't always pay attention to that when I'm doing this. So, and I can put one down below here. Cause like I said, the big thing when you're cutting out the, the it's not a big deal when I'm cutting the pockets out for the bow ties, but when you're cutting the bow tie itself, you really, really, really need this thing to be secure. Did I say really three times? I think I did. Anyway, it needs to be secure like nobody's business because you don't want it shifting at all. All right, I'm going to get my knife here and we're going to peel these up. 
maybe. Maybe. There we go. There's one. More. Okay. Oh, hang on. Forgot the most important part, which is I need to lock this thing down. So I need to put this down. So let me get this tape. Ah. Get a big old piece of this tape, and we will put this down on the ground or on the table here. Make sure it's locked down. I heard something on the internet that if you cut tin foil or aluminum foil with your scissors, it sharpens them. I wonder if that's true, because those scissors certainly could use some sharpening. Certainly could use some sharpening. Okay. So I've got a different kind of double side tape on here. This stuff's a little thicker, but it's fine for holding this to the, uh, to the base. I like to use the thin stuff for actually adhering my templates to my wood, but for holding the wood to the, the backer board, this is fine. All right. And I'm going to put this down here. And then I need to figure out how deep to cut. So that'll be the other thing I'm going to look at here in a second. So we get this pushed in. All right, so that's secure. This just keeps my, my, uh, my template from wobbling. It's just about the same size. Uh, let's see, so I'm going to set my depth now for this thing. Probably should have done this before, but that's okay. We'll do it right now. And I'm going to bring it over. I need to take the collar off of here. So this interior collar or this, this larger collar comes off. And we're going to use the interior collar to run around the inside of that template, which will give us the perfect size. And then what I need to do is plunge this down and see where my edge goes and oops not far enough there we go because i need to go a little bit deeper here um, in order to I need to go a little deeper so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my stop here and raise this up just a little bit to loosen this and raise this up just a hair. And that should get me a little deeper than where I was, but not so deep that I'm going to go all the way through and have an issue. So let me test this out again. Is that right? Huh. That does not seem deep enough. Um, it does certainly not seem deep enough. Am I hitting? I am hitting. It does not seem deep enough. Hang on a second. I just want to measure this real quick. Let's see how deep this was. Hmm. I need to go deeper, deeper, deeper. Oh, well, I'm stupid. I went the wrong way because, you know, stupid is as stupid does. So that's about that. So let's go about like that. I tell you, this is just not my day for being smart. Not my smart day today. How about now? That's pretty good. I could go down just a hair deeper. Like I said, I don't want to go all the way through, but I do want to get If I go through in a little bit in some of the areas, it's okay. That should be good right there. Okay. Now I'm going to adhere this plate. I've been really careful because the, the, the tape's already on there. So we're going to put this down. I think right here is good. Should be good right there. 
I'm just going to press this down. Actually, I'm going to put this in the back so it doesn't tip this. And I'll keep it from tipping over as I'm pushing this way because I don't want this tipping at all. I need to be really secure. And remember, I'm just going around in a circle with this thing, following the, uh, just following the outside of the uh, template here, not, not removing material from the inside. Okay, what the hell, let's do it. Okay, there's one, and I clean these out because it just makes it easier to cut through the next one. Do these in about two or three passes. Let me find my awl here, clean this out. Okay, that is so much cleaner than the last ones I did because of the the way that this uh, this acrylic here had worn out or gotten burned. All right, next pass. Once again, we're going to clean it out because it just makes life easier. Okay, and this should be the final pass here to get this one done. So it should be the final depth on this one. All right. Should be a success. Uh, clean this out a little bit first. And we're gonna pop this template off and we'll take this over to the bandsaw. Um, and we will, there we go. Uh, we will cut this one free. Now this one did not go all the way through. So this one, a little bit better on my uh, depth cut on here, hopefully deep enough. But um, we're gonna have the entire depth to work with because I'm gonna clean these edges out with a, a chisel. So we should be okay. All right, uh, da, 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 da. I think I changed my screen over here. So I'm gonna zip it back over to the table saw or to the band saw. There we go. Nice. Just like that. And I'll give you a view and then we'll cut this out. See how we did.
Ooh. Ah, great. Great, great, great. Ah, uh, come on. Well, my wood pinched and I was trying to back it out. And hang on a second, I need to, before I set my depth here with my backstop here, I'm gonna move this over because my, I don't like where that's sitting. It should be a little further out. Right way, nope, other way. Ah, oh, this is a piece of crap here. Ah, oh, jeez. This thing is a piece of donkey do. This handle has completely busted out of here, so I can't make adjustments to my depth on here. You know, maybe? Uh, uh. I need it to ride further back on the wheel, and I'm trying to adjust that, but uh. there we go, like that, and now I can adjust the other things. I don't know why this all of a sudden got out of alignment, but probably because I just had to yank it out of the thing there. So this goes just behind the gullet. that. Okay. And it also needs to go down. I don't know why it's so far up. It needs to be down here. And then I need to adjust these that are rubbing. This one needs to come in just a hair. This one needs to come in just a hair. Band saws are great, but they can be fussy, and if you don't get them set up right, they will give you headaches like nobody's business. So it's really, really pays to just get them set up and working exactly where they should. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me get all this stuff tightened down now. Um, Alex Snodgrass, on Facebook has some, and I think on maybe on YouTube, some great setup videos for um, for bandsaws, and I highly recommend them. 
because once you do it right, it makes all the difference in the world. All right, let me get this going here. Better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it was not a planned thing to do, but um, honestly, I needed to do it just to make sure everything looked good um, and cut right. <clears throat> Last thing I want to do is screw this up because my bandsaw went wacky on me. Uh, let's see, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this up. It does have a little bandsaw fuzz on here. Um, I can never find my sanding pad. Yeah, there it is. All right. So, Clean this up, just uh, taking the bandsaw fuzz off of it. And then I'll clean it up with my chisel where I didn't quite cut all the way through. So let me put this in the vise here. And let's get this uh, cleaned up. Didn't take too long to clean these edges off here. Just need to go flush with this. Just stuff flying around outside. Right. And these edges. I'm going to bevel these a little bit when I'm done here, just so they fit in nicely. So, you know, if it's not, if I gouge a little bit off the edge or whatever, it doesn't really matter as long as it's going to fit, match up with the rest of the, the actual cut. That's what matters. that that's good and like i said i'm just gonna bevel these off here get the other side okay Flip it over and get this one. Make sure I get the bevel on the right side because that's important. And is that my mailman already? Wow. The mailman be early. Yep, that's the mailman. He's a very distinctive sounding vehicle. But he is early today. Usually not here till after two or three. Well, it is almost two. Wow. Look at me go late today. I did start late though. So there is that. Um, and 
uh, I just need to get these ends done a little bit. And I'm wondering if I can do this the easy way and just kind of use my block plane on these ends like that. Even if it chips a little bit, it's okay. But that's actually much easier. Yep, that's easier. We get these ends done. Okay, so a nice chamfer on there. Let's show you real quick. So I chamfered that edge just like that. I don't know if you can see that. So all these edges chamfered. And I'm looking again because I hear my mailman out there. Is he dropping anything in there? What you doing here, mailman? Oh, well. Um, and then we're going to take this and we're just going to dry fit it into one of these real quick. And that's a very nice fit in there. Once again, I've still got a little bit of a uh, little bit of tightness there that I will fill in with some dust and stuff. Um, see ya. But there's one. I'll do the other one. I'm going to get these glued in. I'm going to get these flattened down and I'm going to sand this whole thing so that when we come back on Monday, um, this is going to be the top of the table. Now we will not this side, we're going to flip it over to the top and then I'm going to start working on the bow ties for the top. If I'm happy with the, the only problem I have is that I can't do this middle size one anymore. I'm probably going to have to hand cut some bow ties for this. Didn't want to do that, but I'm going to have to probably. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I'm still a little nervous about hand cutting bow ties just because it's just, it's just one of those skill sets, you know, it's like, it takes a while. You gotta be really meticulous with it, but I don't think these bow ties, the smaller size that I just did, um, I don't think this size right here is big enough to span that crack on the other side, which is what I really wanted to do. I might, I want some longer ones in there, I think. And, um, I think, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try a hand cut and I don't know if I'm going to need to do the whole thing. I may just do two up there because I've got, I got a lot of, a lot of, uh, sturdiness now with these three in the bottom and these two over here, this thing is not going to move anymore. Um, but I want to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever happens here that I've got, um, you know, the stability, but also the looks that I want. I want this to look nice. And I think the more elegant slender, um, bow tie, like it's more slender than this, this one's too wide. I think half this width would actually look good. And that might be something that I try to do is something a little bit longer, a little bit more slender, a little bit more elegant and a little bit more of a testament to my abilities. Um, I have plenty of wood to make that out of. Um, I've got more walnut here that I could use for a nice slender, um, slender bow tie. I might do some practice cuts using my jig. Um, this thing right here, I've got this along with the angle jig that I uh, made for it. And I might do some, some practice cuts with that and come up with some pieces that I think look good. So yeah, maybe I'll do that this weekend. I've got a bunch of stuff to do this weekend. Uh, my family's coming back into town on Tuesday and I need to clean some stuff and I still have some shopping and stuff to do. I got to package stuff and get it in the mail. Yeah, lots of stuff to do. So since it's almost two o'clock, I need to bail out of here and I need to uh, get some lunch and I need to get busy doing some stuff because I have so much to do. But I'm glad uh, I was able to get this much done and get this bottom done. Like I said, I can get this whole thing sanded, shaved down, sanded, and get this bottom prep done. And then I can move on to the top. And I mean, we're getting closer. I still need, you know, I need to do the top. I need to do the bow ties in the top. Then this whole thing needs to get epoxy filled. This whole crack is getting epoxy filled. That's going to be an adventure in itself. 
And then um, I need to sand it and I need to make legs. And I haven't made the legs yet, but I do have some ideas and I've found some material online that gave me some really good ideas of what I want to do in, in the way of legs. So that is really great. All I have to do is buy myself a $1,500 Fest tool, um, uh, tool to do it. No, I'm just kidding. But it would be really useful if I had one. If I got a domino, they want to, you know, loan me for a little bit. No, no, nobody. Okay. Anyway, domino would be handy. I don't have a domino. I have to come up with some other ideas, maybe some bridal joints, things like that. So, but anyway, I did find some ideas. It's going to be really cool. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to bail out. I'm going to head into my weekend with a lot of stuff to do and hopefully back here on Monday and this will be the other side of the table and that will be cool. So have a great weekend. Get in your shop if you can. Get those packages mailed. Running out of time if that's your thing. And uh, otherwise, uh, come back and see me on Monday. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Thank you.